everyone, I'm Meredith, and I'm so happy you're joining us for our next message in our Now What series. A big welcome to those of you who are joining us for the very first time, and we're so glad you're here. As you're watching, engage with us through our new interactive platform, where you can chat with one of our online hosts, fill out a connect card, and even give while the service is going on. Enjoy the service. Welcome guys, we are so glad that you're here with us. We'd love to worship with you even though we're not together, but we're all worshiping in spirit and in truth. Let's stand and worship. Yeah. 
Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you are with us no matter where we are. We give glory and honor to you in your name.
I don't know if you guys have noticed, but The Point has been hosting a lot of blood drives these days to the Red Cross. They've lost a lot of their donation sites due to the current circumstances, and we've been able to step in and fill that gap by opening our building as a donation site. It's just another example of how your generosity is making a big difference and reaching out into the community. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. It's making a huge kingdom impact. Let's pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you for the work that you're doing during these uncertain times. And we know that you're in full control and you're so sovereign over everything. Thank you for your many blessings on us. Thank you for taking care of us. And thank you for including us in your work. We love you so much and we, we give you this offering and we ask that you use it in your mighty, perfect way. In your name, amen. Morning, East Point family. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Graham. I'm the Young Adults Pastor here on staff, and it's so good to be with you virtually this morning. I know many of us would rather be together in person, but thank you so much for tuning in and engaging online. Today we're going to be continuing going through our series called Now What, where we've been looking at the commands of Jesus and applying them directly to our lives. And so today our command that we're going to be looking at is in Matthew 16. And this is a point in Jesus's ministry where he's starting to gain a lot of traction. Uh, he's silenced the Pharisees. He's given profound teachings. He's even shown his sovereignty over the storms and over the demons themselves. And so there's a buzz about Jesus going on in the land. And even his disciples are wondering, who is this guy? And so Jesus, he kind of has this DTR with the disciples. And he asks them the question. He says, who do you say I am. Who do, you, who do you guys say I am? And so Peter speaks up. He's kind of one of the more bold of and outspoken of the disciples. And he says, well, you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And as we know, Peter's right. Jesus is coming into the world. He's reversing the curse of sin. He's establishing God's reign on earth. But Jesus kind of throws a curveball at his disciples. And he says this, he says, Yes, this is true, but also I'm going to be sent into the officials. They're going to murder me, and I'm going to be raised again on the third day. And so the disciples, they're kind of like scratching their heads at this point. They weren't expecting him to say that. They don't even completely understand why he's saying what he's saying. And so Peter, he's feeling good about himself. He, he spoke out. He got it right earlier. And, and, and he says, no, Jesus, this is not going to happen to you. And so what Jesus says next is actually probably one of the biggest burns in scripture. He says, get behind me, Satan. Can you imagine that? Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan, to you. I mean, there's going to take a lot of ice to get over that, that burn for Peter. And then Jesus says this. He's, he, he pulls his disciples together. And this is where he gives his command that we're going to look at today to his disciples. He pulls them together. And I picture he kind of gets... A little bit serious and in Matthew 16 verse 24 he says this he says if anyone would come after me he must deny himself pick up their cross and follow me so Jesus is saying yes good job you guys found out who I am but he's saying if you want to wear the jersey on this team if you want to be associated with me you have to put skin in the game He's saying, this is not going to be easy. There's going to be sacrifice. There's going to be denials. But I'm going to tell you what, there's going to be purpose and joy and freedom like you've never experienced before. Follow me. You know, I think many of us, we probably had moments with Jesus like the disciples here. Maybe there's some of you that are watching right now and you've gone to church for a long time. You've, you've memorized verses. You've Maybe even you're born in the baptistry. And, and so you, you know the church game. You've been a Christian for a while. But you're starting to feel like your relationship with God is a little dry. And maybe it's because you've started to create 
following Jesus and conforming that to your comfort zone. And because of that, you're realizing that, that, that you fully haven't sacrificed and, and given over some areas of your life. Or maybe, maybe there's some of you that you're watching this, you just gave your life to Jesus, you just experienced his saving grace, but you're realizing that some of those temptations, some of those people, um, some of those problems in your old life didn't go away and maybe even to a degree have gotten worse and you're wondering, is it worth it? And, and then maybe there's some of you, you're watching and you're like, I have no idea what I believe in. Uh, I'm just here, I'm watching, I'm curious, I'm, I'm a seeker. But you see that Jesus had some big promises and you realize that one of the only ways to find out if they're true is to actually take a step and to, to take a risk. You know, in one way or another, we're all asking the question, is it truly worth it? Is following Jesus worth it? Let me share you an inspiring story, a little parable. Uh, there was once a man who lived a comfortable life. Uh, he worked a comfortable job. At the end of the day, he came home to his comfortable couch. He drank a comfortable drink, watched his favorite show. Overall, he described his life as comfortable. Uh, whenever someone asked him a question that was kind of more deep or existential, he would brush it off with humor and he would never leave his comfort zone. Uh, at the age of 76.1, the average age of death in America for men, he passed away, never really leaving his comfort zone in the end. Not, not so inspiring, is it? Try these stories instead. A squad of American soldiers are sent into enemy territory to risk their lives to save a private named Ryan. A woman leaves her life of comfort to go to Calcutta, India, to, to be with the, and serve the destitute and dying. A young woman decides that she's going to say yes to the life inside of her, that she's going to raise this child on her own, and the dad's not even in the picture. She knows it's going to be hard. She knows there's going to be sacrifice. See, isn't it true that the stories that inspire us the most are stories of sacrifice. We know it's true, we know it's the case, but usually it involves saying no. Usually it involves denying something that we want. And nobody likes to say, to say no to the things they, they want, right? Now that summer's around the corner, I wanna, I wanna imagine with me that you're going on a diet. Imagine that. Maybe you're, you're trying to burn off some of the quarantine pounds that you put on. And so you're going on a diet and you even decide you're going to go for a jog. And so you go for a quick jog around your neighborhood. It's nice out. You're getting sweaty. You come home and you're catching your breath. And as you open the door, all of a sudden this heavenly aroma just strikes you. And you look over at your kitchen table and you see that your best friend has left you a dozen warm, hot, holy donuts. Sounds good, right? Your eyes begin to widen, your mouth begins to water, and you see that there's, there's donuts that you didn't even know existed. There's maple bacon donuts, there's margarita donuts, pomegranate donuts, there's lemon glazed donuts. And, and as you're seeing these donuts, you forget everything that you you had established earlier and you reach for one and just as you're about to bite it, you remember, that's right, I'm on a diet right now. I wanna feel good about myself. I wanna feel energetic and so you put the donut back down. Now, what does that feel like? <laughs> it feels like death, right? In that moment, denial goes against every urge in our body. And that's simply a dozen donuts. As Christians, some of us, we're denying a, an addiction to lust that maybe you've had for years. Maybe there's some of us that you're, you feel like you're called to forgive someone that's hurt you in ways that you can't even imagine or I can't even imagine. Maybe there's some of us that are, are, are called to adopt an identity in Christ and it means giving up an identity that we've forged for 
for a lifetime. See, denial is painful. It requires sacrifice. And the only way we can truly deny ourselves is by seeking a greater desire in Jesus than the things we're giving up. See, look at how Jesus starts his command here. He says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and pick up his cross. See, Jesus isn't forcing us into sacrifice or denial. Instead, he's putting the ball in our court and he's saying, if you want to come after me, if you want to follow me, you have to desire me more than the things that you're going to have to say no to. The past few years, I've actually experienced more denial in my life than I've really ever experienced before. Uh, I did not join the Marines. In fact, uh, I got married and I have a seven-month-year-old baby, uh, baby Kana. She's a blessing. Uh, I love my wife and my child so much. But I'm realizing there's just things now that I can't do that I used to be able to do when I was 20 years old. Uh, I can't stay up until midnight playing video games anymore. I can't, uh, on a whim, all of a sudden up and leave and go for a backpacking trip with my friends. Um, I can't just buy anything that I want to buy. Impulse buys are out the window now. Uh, and I'm realizing there's a lot of things that I have to say no to. But it's not a chore for me because I've said yes to my family. I've said yes to a loving relationship with my family. And it's not a chore because I love them so much. I've said yes to them. And I realize that means saying no to some other things. You see, I think the principle is similar when we deny ourselves and we follow Jesus. Our desire for Jesus has to be so great that we're willing to strip away the other things that we have to say no to. Look at how Jesus sees himself in Matthew 13, verse 37. He says this, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and with joy he went and sold all he had and bought that field. See, Jesus doesn't want you and me to be white knuckling in obedience. Instead, he wants us to be so in love with him and so desiring him that our desires for anything else begin to fade away. So I want you to ask yourself this question. Is Jesus truly the treasure of my heart? Is Jesus truly my greatest desire? See, sometimes as followers of Jesus, we we beat ourselves up because we're not where we want to be or because we keep falling into the same sin patterns over again. We're on this roller coaster of behaviors. We feel shame when we try to, when we fail, and then we try harder, right? We try, feel shame, try harder. Anyone else? But the truth of the matter is we can try as hard as we want but trying to change by your own willpower is only going to lead you into frustration and failure. Just look at Romans 7. It's all about trying to change on our own. What we need to do is we need to give Jesus our heart. I heard a pastor put it this way. God doesn't simply want your habits. He wants your heart. And when you give him your heart, your habits begin to change. Let me say that again. God doesn't want your habits. He wants your heart. And when you give him your heart, your habits change. See, Jesus isn't some drill instructor that's trying to make you a good boy or a good girl. He's a king. He's a friend who desires you to change from the inside out. Pretty awesome. And I'm not saying that any of this is easy, but Jesus promises it's so worth it. Let's continue on in the passage. Jesus says, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his very soul? 
Maybe uh, some of you who are watching have heard of a thing called a monkey trap before. Um, I've heard it said, if you want to catch a monkey, then put some fruit into a hole that's just big enough for the monkey to fit their hand into. And once they grab onto the fruit with their fist, they, they get stuck into the hole and they can't escape. It's a self-inflicted snare. I've even heard it said that the, the monkeys, they, they won't let go of that fruit and they'll stay trapped even onto the point of getting captured or, or dying. Pretty crazy. See, Jesus knows we're just like that. He knows that we're selfish by nature. He knows that you're gonna continue to pursue comfort, that having enough is never truly enough, that we're gonna try to prolong our lives as long as we can, that we're gonna strive for more and more. But here's what Jesus is saying in this passage. He's saying, you need to wake up. He's saying, you need to wake up because you've, when was the last time you saw a hearse towing a U-Haul? He's saying, you can gain the whole world, but you can't take it with you. But you can try, and, and you might try. See, sometimes I think we get caught in the, the monkey trap. We, we forsake our families for a career. We forsake generosity for luxury. We choose our comfort over a true purpose. Sometimes we even choose this life over eternity. See, Jesus knows this. He, he made you, he made me. And he says, here's the antidote. Loosen your grip. Lose your life and surrender. Trust that I have something so much better in store for you. I want to ask you today, where have you fallen into that monkey trap? Where are you clenching your fists? And where is Jesus saying, surrender, surrender it to me? Maybe you know, maybe you've clenched your fists on resentments and you need to forgive. Maybe some of you, you've clenched your fists around money and you need to be more generous. Maybe there's some of you that you've just clenched onto your past and you don't feel like you deserve a saving relationship with Jesus, but Jesus is saying, let go, open your hands. So I wanna ask you, what's the story that you'll choose? See, surrender, it takes sacrifice, it takes denial. But Jesus is saying this, he's saying, if you just open your hands, if you choose to follow me, if you make me your greatest desire, it's going to be so worth it. It's not going to be easy, but you'll have freedom, you'll have joy, and you'll have purpose like you've never had before. Let's ask Jesus to open up our hands so that we can surrender to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you so much for who you are, God. Thank you that you have come to this earth and that you paid the ultimate price for us, that you died on the cross for us. God, would you make our hearts just long for you, God? Would you be the treasure of our hearts, Jesus? And so that as we just choose to open up our hands, that we let go of the things that we're holding on to, and we deny ourselves and we experience sacrifice, that we would have that life and that freedom that you promise. So please, God, we ask that you would help us, come alongside us. Your burden is easy and your yoke is light, Jesus. We thank you, and it's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, now we're going to go into a uh, time of communion. So if you have a communion uh, with you, uh, feel free to take it. And as we're taking communion together, we're remembering a Savior that gave up everything so that he could have a relationship with us. He left heaven and came to earth and he lived a perfect life. He was tempted in every way and he died on the cross for, for you and for me. So we're going to remember that now and we're going to reflect that into our lives. Um, and as we're taking communion, I also want you to meditate What's an area that Jesus is calling me to open up my hands and surrender to him? So let's take that together. Let's take his body broken for us. Take and eat. Now 
and his blood, cup of salvation, take and drink. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, so much for your sacrifice. We love you and praise you, and it's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us online. Um, if you want prayer or want to connect for any reason, you can call our prayer hotline. Also, um, on our Facebook, you can type in that you want prayer and our host will be with you. And if you're watching on our chat on our website, you can also press that prayer button. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a great day.
Great message from Graham today on denying ourselves and making Jesus our treasure. It's so relevant given our current circumstances. We want to thank you for joining us today online. It's our desire to keep you plugged in and connected. One of the ways you can do this is by filling out your Connect card. It's here. You can sign up for groups, classes, and even send in your prayer requests. Speaking of prayer, we have our prayer team ready to pray with you throughout the entire week. Head over to eastpoint.church slash prayer where you can call or text our prayer team and they'll get back to you very soon. If you're new here with us today, we encourage you to hop right over to our Facebook page where our Connections Director, Keenan Eaton, is ready to meet you to share more of our East Point story and also show ways where you can get more plugged in. Lastly, just a quick reminder that our intern applications are due by May 31st. Find out more information by heading over to eastpoint.church slash intern. We hope you have a great Sunday and we'll see you back here next week.